Desperately for a second chance to meet Jack Dempsey. And Tony wants two. 40,000 in the stands are amazed at the Frenchman's ability to take punishment, such as Gene relentlessly inflicts. It's a knockout for the Marine and a chance for a championship fight with Dempsey. Tom Gibbons, brilliant heavyweight boxer, takes on the fast rising young Marine, Gene Tunney. Seated in his corner, Gibbons waits confidently. Across the ring, Tunney looks equally sure of himself. As round one gets underway, Gene doesn't waste any time using that left hand like a rapier. Gibbons is going to have to pursue his younger opponent. He knows that it's going to take an accurate head and body attack to slow down the brilliant boxing ex-Marine. Gibbons has certainly got his work cut out for him as he's a 34-year-old veteran compared to the 27-year-old Gene Tunney, who is considered to be in the very prime of his great career. Gibbons turned professional in 1911 and has had 106 professional fights in the past 14 years, winning 104 and losing only two. This is one of the most fantastic records in the history of boxing. Tom has fought three no decision contests with the great Harry Greb. During that period of time, the only way a fighter could win was by the knockout route. If both fighters were standing on their feet at the end of 10 rounds, there was no decision rendered. But after those three fights with Harry Greb, newspaper men were unable to agree whether Greb or Gibbons had won on points. That's how close they were. Round one draws to a close with Tunney getting the edge on his relentlessly accurate jab. Here in round four, Gene takes on somewhat of a different strategy. Notice how it's Tunney who is now moving forward. He has apparently decided to step up the pace. This is a surprise to everyone. It was thought that Gibbons, a marvelous boxer himself, would have to chase the younger Tunney. 
but it's Gene out punching Gibbons at the rate of three and four to one. That sharp left jab of Tunney's is constantly keeping Tom off balance. Gene isn't letting Tom get any type of an attack underway. Tunney turned professional in 1915 at the tender age of 17. Even then, he was six feet, one half inch tall and weighed 170 pounds. He had 15 professional fights, winning all, prior to joining the Marines in 1919. After winning all types of boxing honors during his service career, Gene came out of the Corps and took up where he left off. In 1920, he had 12 professional prize fights, winning them all, nine by KOs. Here in the beginning of round 12, Tunney has taken complete command over the aging veteran Tom Gibbons. Gene is showing the strength and confidence which has carried him to 76 victories in 77 professional prize fights. It's all Tunney now. Jabs, hooks, straight right hands. Gibbons is reeling under the constant pressure. Gene steps in and lands a tremendous right hand punch to the jaw, flooring Gibbons for the first time in his professional career. The referee's count reaches eight. Tunney moves in quickly and lands two smashing right hands to the head, which put Gibbons down for the second time. Tunney goes to a neutral corner as the referee moves in to toll the final 10. As Gibbons gets to his feet, Tunney moves in to console and congratulate his dejected opponent. By 1926, Jack Dempsey has not defended his title in three years. To quell the mounting public clamor, Jack signs with Tex Rickard to fight against a suitable opponent in the not-too-distant future. Promoter Rickard decides that Gene Tunney is the right challenger at the right time. With Tunney signing, the stage is set for the epic Dempsey-Tunney battle. Gene seems so happy with the turn of events that he kids Tex about the part in the middle of the old gambler's slick down hair. Gene's opponents know he isn't that playful when he's in the ring. September 23, 1926, challenger Gene Tunney steps into the ring in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Champion Dempsey arrives to be greeted by the roar of 125,000 excited fans, the largest paid crowd ever to attend a single sporting event. Rain started to fall as the fighters are introduced. But there's no thought of postponing this fight. The contest is going on, come hell or high water. 
Dempsey on the left of your screen. No history of Fispian is complete without the sensation that rocked the sporting world here in Philadelphia's vast, rain-soaked sesquicentennial stadium, that memorable night back in September 1926. Jack Dempsey, the Manassa Mauler, conqueror of giants and reputedly the hardest hitter of all time, versus Gene Tunney for the championship of the world. For seven long years, William Harrison Dempsey has reigned as king of all heavyweights. Tonight, that mastery is being disputed by an unknown Marine, a fighting scientific boxing leatherneck from the sidewalks of New York. When Dempsey took the title from Jess Willard on that never-to-be-forgotten July the 4th, 1919, Gene Tunney was fighting his first match. That he's come a long way in a hurry is evidenced by the fact that these two men have lured the nearest thing to a $2 million gate the sport world has ever heard of. It's a Tex record promotion, and boy, back in those days, Tex knew how to put them on. The records he's hit have never been tough, but let's get back to the ring. Tunney, a brilliant boxer and a great puncher, personifies ring perfection. Tunney the boxer versus Dempsey the slugger. The weaving, crouching, dodging Dempsey, who's lost only three fights in all his long and colorful career. For Tunney, it's his greatest effort. Primed and ready, he takes advantage of every opening, shooting punches that rock the champ on his now very wobbly legs. For Jack, this is a new experience. Usually, he's the one who's dishing it out. But this Marine has Jack's number. Round by round, he wears Dempsey down. Through the first nine rounds, as the rain continues to fall, Tunney continues to pile up points. By the tenth round, Dempsey's only chance to hold his title is to score a last-minute knockout. But this isn't the thunderous Dempsey that massacred Jess Willard in 1919. This is a tired champion, repeatedly being beaten to the punch. Gene Tunney has given a masterful boxing exhibition. Gene Tunney, boxing beautifully. It's over. Both fighters stand waiting in the now driving rain. No fans have left as everyone awaits the decision. When it comes, it's no surprise. Gene Tunney is the new heavyweight champion. Congratulated by a gracious Jack Dempsey.
new tone to boxing, much as Corbett did 35 years before. Tony was an intellectual, hobnobbing with some of the world's leading eggheads. That bearded fellow is the brilliant George Bernard Shaw. Tony and Shaw became close friends. A proud New York City gives the boy who grew up in Manhattan's Greenwich Village a boisterous welcome. by the roar of 125,000 excited fans, the largest paid crowd ever to attend a single sporting event. Rain started to fall as the fighters are introduced. But there's no thought of postponing this fight. September 22nd, 1927, world heavyweight champion Gene Tunney in white trunks comes out for round one in his return bout with former champion Jack Dempsey. This is Tunney's first fight since winning the heavyweight title from Dempsey one year ago. Jack Dempsey in dark trunks has fought only once since losing the title to Gene. In July, two months ago, Dempsey KO'd tough Jack Sharkey in seven rounds. Champion Gene Tunney in white trunks boxing well. This fight has followed a pattern remarkably similar to their first fight with Tunney ahead on points. But in round seven, Dempsey opened up catching Tunney with his potent right hand, followed by a series of seven devastating punches. Tunney goes down for the first time in his career. Dempsey stays near the fallen fighter. Referee Dave Barry waits for Jack to move to a neutral corner before he starts the count of one. His funny days are wisely taking full advantage of those precious extra seconds to recover. Tunney actually gets up at the count of 14. Dempsey goes right after Tunney, looking for that knockout. Now watch that sequence again. Here comes that devastating series of punches by the Manasseh Mauler. Tunney has just hit the canvas, and with the aid of a superimposed stopwatch, we know time Tunney is actually down. Dempsey has forgotten the new rule. The count does not begin until he gets to a neutral corner. Five seconds have elapsed before referee Barry is poised to begin the count of one. Gene looks hurt, dazed as the count begins. At the official count of four, when nine seconds have actually elapsed, Gene is looking at the referee and picks up the numbers. You be the judge. Could Tunney have risen at this point? 
at the official count of nine. But after 14 seconds have elapsed, Gene is getting off the canvas. Then Tunney gets on his bicycle, trying to stay away from the rampaging Dempsey. The Manasseh Moeller wants his title back. Dempsey throwing punches from all angles. Tunney backpedaling, trying to clear the cobweb. By the eighth round, Tunney has fully recovered. Now watch this crisp right hand by Tunney. Dempsey goes down for a one count. Notice here the referee incorrectly starts his count immediately after Dempsey's knee touched and before Tunney could get to a neutral corner. Gene Tunney definitely in command, boxing brilliantly. In the 10th and final round, Tunney puts it all together, making every move count. It's all Tunney's fight. Dempsey hoping for some miracle. Tunney boxing superbly. There's the bell ending this battle of the long count. The, the judge's decision once again will go to Gene Tunney, who retains the heavyweight crown. In one year, Tunney will announce his decision to retire from boxing as undefeated heavyweight champion thus paving the way for the elimination fight between Max Schmeling and Jack Sharkey. heavyweight champion defends his title against Tom Heaney of New Zealand in a scheduled 15 round bout. We're in round one. Tony the taller man with a crew haircut. Tony's 191 pounds tonight. Heaney 198. fans here at Yankee Stadium tonight. Even though Tunney beat the great Jack Dempsey nine months before for the second time, many fight fans still think Tunney is not of championship caliber. He's got to beat Heaney to prove himself. boxer, but tonight he's up against a tough slugger. Heaney is really rugged. They call him the hard rock from down under. Now round 10. 
Honey's one of the fastest men ever to hold a heavyweight championship. And he can hit from any position. Take a better look at Heaney's knockdown. Two fast jabs and a right cross find their mark. Heaney's knocked to the canvas and he's out cold on the ring apron. But he's saved by the bell. Now round 11. The 60,000 fans are now cheering for Tunney. He's proving to all the world that he really is a great champion. tired, badly punished, but he's got plenty of heart.